Welcome one and all. Welcome to the most amazing podcast and program that you will ever see. You know where you can find us on YouTube and also everywhere that you get your podcast. Uh, we are the team called Back to Basics, a comic book podcast, and we're here to be true to the comic book form and the medium just because that's how we do. We want to thank you all who've been supportive. We strive to be different and we want to make sure that we bring that same flavor and we hope that our insights on the history of comic books and also the way that we operate as a team uh, will help you kind of get back into it. Or maybe you might be interested in maybe some runs and Tempos can tell you about some runs because he owns a whole bunch of them, a whole gang of them. Right. So we'll I be heard. interviewing some amazing people too. And then we'll also have some folks to be a part of your conversation. So we'll be pulling you in. So this diverse group of hosts are dedicating every episode to the very passions that brought us together and continue to push us to give our audience new and refreshing perspectives. And so with that said, this episode is near and dear to our hearts. There's been a lot going on with our community in particular uh, around mental health and health issues. This episode is Heroes in Crisis. And so we decided that we would tackle this really heavy, heavy conversation around how comic books have been able to uh, dive in into the thematics of what goes on uh, behind the scenes and that the superhero dumb is not something that's just fun and games. There's a lot that comes with it and trauma. And I think comic books are a real interesting gateway into which we can see the real world and where we are. So we'll be doing a three part series. And today's series is going to be focusing specifically on heroes in crisis, the DC run. And if you haven't read it, we're going to give you a snapshot of what that looks like. But before we do that, Let's introduce ourselves. I'm Gen X. I feel like I've been collecting comics since the beginning of time, but I'm not that old. So uh, I grew up in Brooklyn. My love for comics was just an escape, and it helped me believe in myself. And here I am with this amazing crew looking to really elevate the game. Um, and so I'm going to pan it over to Miss Keys. What's going on, everybody? This is Miss Ebony Keys, um, a Florida girl. Uh, just started collecting and really, or re really, I've been reading for a while, but started collecting almost a year now. Um, but the love for comics, I have to say, have brought me real closer to these two young fellas on the screen that y'all see. Um, it's just not, it's about community. I see it as everybody being family. There we go. And y'all know me, it's your boy Tempos from Tempos Laboratory. Hey, listen, I'm always going to bring comics. I'm going to bring culture to your ear. That's what I do with the complete sets and knowledge, reviews. Let's go. Let's get it back to basics. Back to basics. So if you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel, this is where you get the full breadth and depth of our interviews, our shows. So make sure that you are a subscriber. And then once the audio podcast is available, make sure you give us them five stars. That's your homework. Make sure you get them five stars so we can get up in the ranks and people get to know who we are. But definitely share it with your family, friends, drive into work. Those are a smaller snippets of the longer version of what you'll see on the YouTube channel. So we know people don't have a lot of time to spend and we want to make sure that your time that you spend with us audio wise is at least 20 to 30 minutes long. So we know for some people that is a great bite size. So we're hoping to give you some dope stuff and we're going to jump into the heroes in crisis. This is part one. Uh, we're going to talk about normalizing mental health. And so I'm going to throw it back to Tempos Laboratory, AKA Tempos, the Don. So, I brought up Heroes in Crisis. It's a DC comic book. It's written by Tom King, artist Clayman. It's definitely hit home to me because let me just put that up there. I know a lot of people had it. The book came out in 2018 by DC. Now, this book is basically about the Trinity, you know, Batman, Superman, and uh, Wonder Woman making a facility for, I, I wouldn't just say heroes because the doors are really open for everyone to come in and speak. It was like a trauma center for those that go through, you know, the fights, the trauma, the losing people. And we all know about comic books. We know that there's a lot of characters that lose a lot and they have no nobody to talk to, you know, no one to lean on. So this is pretty much why I brought this up, you know, to the group so we could uh, explain, especially all the stuff going on right now. So, again, they made the sanctuary. They had uh, a face mask. Gen X said that it looks like, uh, what was it, uh, Dr. Psycho Pirate? Yeah. So 
it's pretty much a mystery. It's a whodunit mystery. It starts out with Booster Gold um, and Harley Quinn, right? So we're trying to figure out what's going on. It comes to a point where a lot of them talk into a camera, they speak into it, and it's like therapy for them. They can explain what's happening, what's going on in their life, and how what's, what makes them who they are. There's even the one of the best parts that I like is where Batman actually sits down. Batman never talks to nobody. And he actually sits down and faces the camera, takes his hoodie off, and he tells the camera, like, hey, I train a lot of people, and I lost a lot of people. And he starts to break down and crying, and he just says, I'm sorry, puts the cape back on, and walks off, and, like, back to business. You know, we have Superman saying, you know, he's Clark Kent and what he's going through. We got Wonder Woman. We got the Blue Beetle again. Harley Quinn is in there. Poison Ivy. We have a lot of people that's traumatized in this world. And if you really look at it, we could really say, hey, we got friends and families that's going through stuff like this that don't have nobody to talk to, but, you know, they can't get in front of a camera and talk to somebody or just, you know, just vent, you know? So we definitely wanted to bring this up because we, we want to make sure that our peoples know that we love them and we care for them, and we don't want to lose you because this world needs you, you know? Uh, again, we just lost a lot of people, even, and, I, and at this point, I kind of want to say, you know, rest in peace, uh, JDF, you know, Jason David Frank, we lost him, and that's my childhood right there. But, you know, let's get back to this. How y'all feel about this, like, everything we're talking about so far? Yeah, the, the only thing I would add is, you know, I think – you know, in kind of doing a research, right? We had talked about this earlier, but you know, Tom King, who wrote this, uh, he had motivation behind this, and the reason why he decided to bring this a little bit more to the forefront. You know, he he actually was quoted um, saying that in in history, particularly in comics, um, we've always been reflective about it, right? So he said he literally said that uh, in comics we were always fighting either in World War Two. And then that was reflective in, in, in the way that they, you know, navigated that and that and, and the issues around that. But then you also had the 70s were, you know, around, you know, psychedelics. And so you saw a lot of artists and writers kind of talk about that. And you also saw a lot of the social justice piece. But it was interesting because he in his own in his own words, he said that at the moment right now in particular, that people managing violence and a lot of the things that we're dealing with right now, the mental health piece, especially since we've been in COVID and lockdown. And now, you know, lots of people are having a lot of, you know, basically re-entry into civilization or even in just in general, finding help and support like we used to, uh, or even having access, right? Uh, even though we are virtual, we still are in need for contact. But um, supposedly King actually wrote this and um, he actually developed it in 2016 and he actually suffered a panic attack and uh, he ended up going to the hospital and that same day, it was, it's unbelievable. His grandmother passed away too. So wow. um, she died on the same day. And so anyway, um, he ended up going to therapy. And so this was really the impetus of him, you know, bringing it to the forefront and connecting the heroes piece. Um, you know, whenever DC ever did anything about crisis, it was about, you know, going into the universe and global and just it was really cataclysmic but he really really changed the game when he started talking about how heroes actually dealt with real issues mm -hmm. um and so he really tapped into his own um his own problems and the things that he was going through um funny enough also you know the the sanctuary was actually based off of um his grandmother's house and so he kind of put oh, that wow. in there. Yeah. Yeah. So the sanctuary and, and the house that it looked like was actually a tribute uh, to who she was. So it was really cool. So I just wanted to add that. Um, I think Tempo's touched upon kind of like the the overall the overarching um, concepts. But, you know, that I don't know if you want to reveal the ending um, of the of the whole plot, but just why we're, they were even there and, and the Trinity putting together this, you know, sanctuary was really to help them, you know, navigate and manage some of this trauma that they were, you know, um, you know, having to deal with on a daily basis as heroes. But what happens throughout the story is what what happens at the end. What we find out that the uh, do you want to let people know what happened? I, that's the other thing. I know I mean, you I, like surprises, so I feel like you know I definitely want them to read it because um, sure. I feel like how I feel about the ending. I know. 
we talked about how we felt about the ending, but I kind of want them to get, I want them to get the book because it, it does have a story base. It's a good mystery book. I mean, you got Batman. Batman don't trust no one. I mean, we already know how Batman is with a Tower Tower of Babel. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> it's pretty much the same thing there. It was a part where Harley Quinn stole Wonder Woman's um, lasso, wrapped it around Batman right there, and mm -hmm. made him tell the truth in front of Superman Wonder Woman that Batman still don't trust nobody. He still has... Um, you know, kryptonite in his belt with a lead, lead copper, lead. He don't trust them. You know, he just don't trust anybody. He's ready for anything. That's just who Batman is. But at the end of the day, Batman got his trauma. It's a reason why he's like that. You know, right? Just, you never know someone. Basically, you never know what know, they're going through. We know Batman has trauma. Yeah, <laughs> I mean okay. that's that's even part of it, right? So it's interesting right. that we kind of look at it as kind of a superhero thing, but then it actually is deeper than that. You know trauma and managing trauma and how it manifests is really you know uh, really rough so yeah so um so read the book we really wanted to read the book but most importantly it's it, you know we really the reason why we're tapping into this is because this is near and dear to our heart we have many friends and especially friends in the comic book community that uh, on, a, on a daily basis are dealing with their own stuff pain their own trauma um, or even current trauma or maybe life issues, right? Those right. are things that we take for granted as kind of like everyday things. Um, but sometimes when they're compounded and it's, it's developing, um, you start to see it manifest in relationships and self-destruction or even thinking about suicidal thoughts and things like that. So um, ideation, suicide ideation. So there's a lot that goes along with mental health and and making sure that you manage it. and at the end of the three-part series just want to be clear we also don't want you to just walk away without any resources we're going to make sure that you connect the dots here uh yeah we're talking about superheroes but we really want to make sure that you have the resources so that you can use them or you can help others use them and in uh the last episode we're actually gonna make sure that we have a professional to come in and talk about how do you manage um trauma in particular, anything that you're dealing with and how to navigate those things. We also wanted to make sure that as we discuss that, you know, you all feel free to demystify getting help. I think that that's one of the issues that we find, particularly um, in different communities and de in demographics. But most importantly, um, as you see, the medium itself has always been there. Uh, to kind of highlight those issues. We're going to talk about that today as well. So if you wanted to go into our YouTube channel and even our podcast, you know, drop some um, some runs and drop some heroes that uh, come to mind uh, for you. So just make sure that you uh, stay tuned. And here's some pictures of the Heroes in Crisis. Please, please, it's only nine issues. Make sure that you get that situated. It's such an important part of... Um, of the storyline yeah yep. tempos has his whole set flexing once again um and i love it i love it i'm gonna be <laughs> like him one day <laughs> i mean it was it was definitely a good story it was definitely worth waiting to grab each of them you know because like i said the story was so good the way they sat down and they told that camera everything about themselves well they couldn't even tell their friends or people that they consider friends it was just astounding, man. The breakdown and crying, it was there for a reason. And for someone to go in there and pretty much, I mean, I'm, I'm a spoiler a little bit. Someone came in there and murdered everybody in there, you know, uh, including, uh, you know, Wally West, uh, Arsenal. It was it was crazy. It was a real mystery story. If you like those kind of um, those mystery books, this is probably one of the best ones. Again, my opinion for the ending is my opinion alone. I don't know how everybody's going to feel about the ending, but it's there. It's there for a reason. You call it what it is at face value, but the book itself is good. And it's a good tap point. So you can at least look at somebody else next to you and be like, hey, is everything OK? Let's right. talk because I, I can see, you know, you're going through some stuff because everybody's going through something. It's just a lot of people are real, you know, too proud to say something and that's how the gen that back in the day generation is and i kind of don't want to take it to uh and let my kids know that that's okay i want them to know that if something's wrong with them or something's going on with them that they could sit down with me their best friends or somebody they really trust and just talk 
and let it all out because that person might have a little input or just saying it might just be enough for you be like, you know what? This is kind of crazy that I feel like this because at the end of the day, don't be selfish. You know, if you don't want to be here, that's one thing, but people are going to miss you. People love you. So if you don't want to be here, at least be here for them, you know, because everybody got love. Everybody got love to share. So come on, you know, talk to somebody. Before we wrap up this piece of the puzzle, um, again, we're going to be doing, we're going to be featuring how we connect the dots between comic books and some of the crises that we've been seeing in the past few years and even throughout comic books. Um, Ms. Keys is going to lead us into another piece, which really talks about kind of uh, some some runs. We're going to share with you some of the, I, don't, I wouldn't say favorite runs, but some of the most um, memorable ones that really stick out. And I'm sure some of you all, as you're listening to this, you're hopefully writing down, oh, I got to go in the chat in YouTube or or connect with them and say, hey, don't forget to talk about this in the future. And, and uh, we really want this to be a podcast where we're a little bit more three dimensional. Um, and then that way, you know, it's not just about comic books, but we really want it to be uh, relatable. And so this is going to be a part of what we um, which unfortunately we did lose some uh, a few people. Uh, in the community, we've been doing that for the past few years. And so even people who who are leaning into the medium as a source of like inspiration, um, this can also trigger some people. So I just wanted to be also honest that this is, uh, this is like a trigger warning as well. I just wanted to make sure that you all understand that there is there are resources and we'll share that with you at the end. But I enjoyed it, too. Um, I mean, it it. <laughs> There were certain parts in it that kind of hit home for me because, you know, I'm the type of person that um, I tend to let things bottle up inside and I let it fester up and I don't like to talk about my problems and stuff like that. So um, uh, there was the interview with Wonder Woman when she was talking about the dream that she had about, I believe it was, was her grandmother and stuff like that. And and at the end of the interview, she was talking about, you know, there's other issues bigger at hand um but thank you for listening so it's like that was her moment even though she's just this wonderful person and she's i don't want to cuss because you know how i am but anyways um she's bad the girl's bad but to let you know she has problems too and she had you know just her talking to somebody and you know and getting it out it helped her a lot so you know i loved it i loved it and that girl harley man Harley, <laughs> woo, Harley, y'all know, if you that's don't whole, know, you better, you better get it. That's a whole it. nother, that might be another <laughs> okay. podcast uh, yeah, for okay. us to get into. Talk about uh, screws loose. That well, <laughs> talk about trauma, really, like, yeah, I mean, trauma. you can't get, you can't get no, no more um, traumatic than she has gone through. I mean, I guess there's no comparison. Someone's trauma isn't bigger than someone else's, but, you know, mm-hmm. uh, I think even when they created her. You know, it, it was really interesting. There was actually college courses around that. I don't know if y'all know that, but they actually have college courses around like this deep, deep stuff. Um, and really? so, yeah, and comic books, it's really cool. So to, to be able to normalize that for students. Okay. And so we're here just to kind of just give you a ping and say, hey, it's OK to talk about it. So we're OK to talk about your feelings. Um, and if you need to use comic books as a as a way in a vehicle, let's do right. it. Right. Like, right. <laughs> so Heroes in Crisis is one of them. Miss Keys, what are some other issues? Well, uh, first one that I thought of, Daredevil, uh, Matt Murdock um, from the 1986 Born Again, uh, when Kingpin, you know, destroys him and he loses everything, man. But, you know, it all started with that Karen Page. You know about Karen Page. If you don't know about Karen Page, and you need to read about it. But um, it was his ex-girlfriend. Um heroin addict um and she basically sold matt's information to kingpin and that's just when everything just went left and that's what caused a lot of daredevil's depression how can you not be depressed and not in you know after losing everything you know your house your accounts your job i mean that's something serious yeah i think daredevil had no other recourse really i mean he was exposed um and you know being the superior he was he couldn't really live his life out the way he needed to and so with everything especially with karen betraying him that by itself someone that you love 
uh, you work with, uh, it's pretty, that's a pretty rough storyline. And then uh, to lose it all and figure out how to get it back, which he eventually did. It's kind of crazy. Right. I'm going to highlight Green Arrow. And the reason why I'm bringing Green Arrow up to the front is because there's a lot that's happened with Green Arrow. But Green Arrow, there was a, a run, um, I believe, uh, around the right after the um, final crisis where um, folks thought that Batman and Martian Manhunter had passed away and died. So then they uh, started talking about, well, how can we be proactive and preemptive in defeating some of these criminals that are basically out and about and free to do whatever they want? and possibly even kill them right in the act. So, you know, Green Lantern came out and was like, let me form a super team. And some people had some, you know, reservations around that because they're superheroes. Right. So so what does that mean? Uh, they wanted to be really proactive and different than just a hero dumb that they normally do. Right. So during this uh, series, there's a guy named Prometheus who's a mercenary and he ends up doing a whole bunch of stuff globally, you know, crimes, all types of stuff. And so he decides that he is going to mess with Green Arrow and his family in that kind of star city. And so he ends up actually, uh, the reason why I picked this character is because I actually have the book. But I remember when I first saw this, um, there's, a, there's an actual page, splash page of um, Green Arrow's ward, we call him a ward, uh, Roy Harper. And uh, he basically gets his arm ripped off by mm -hmm. this Prometheus guy and severs it completely off. And uh, obviously as an archer, so he was basically Green Arrow's protege. So yeah, to come after him when he killed him. The yeah, when, or to be part of the family, right? The Green Arrow family, which kept growing. Anyway, um, the no one knew that this was Prometheus. And basically when they went to go question him and put him uh, under questioning, uh, he had a bomb in at Star City, and this is really just his way, kind of like in in uh, the Dark Knight, where uh, the Joker kind of it, it's a distraction, right? So uh, they end up blowing up Star City, and Prometheus is responsible for it. And he killed millions of people, million millions of people. Uh, not only that, he also killed um, Roy Harper's daughter at the same time. So that took um, Ali over the edge. And what was really poignant about this storyline was that um, Green Arrow ended up tracking Prometheus down and uh, he found him and decided that he would put an arrow through his head and kill him. And it was that break, that psychotic break that prompted him to basically walk away from being a superhero. And he knew that folks would um, basically ban him from from being a part of that league and so he had to go through a self-discovery now this isn't the first time that creed arrow has had some self-discovery uh we'll talk more about heroes in crisis in the future when we deal with race and ethnicity um and green arrow the stories with green arrow and also green lantern um which was an interesting run with those two characters but in this particular run uh you find green arrow is thinking about his superhero status or his hero status and whether or not he did the right thing. And in his mind, he's working through it. And so he kind of unfortunately does it on his own and doesn't really have help, um, which is why there's such a, a long period of time before you see him again. So that's Green Arrow. I don't know if you all have other uh, superhero runs or villains or other folks. I know we have a gang of them that we can think of, but Tempos, so do you have any folks? I mean, there's so many. I mean, if you want to talk about trauma and that still pushes forward to do what he does, we could talk about Peter Parker, Spider-Man. He lost he lost his girl. He lost Gwen Stacy. MJ, he had to back away from that. He lost his uncle. At some comments, he lost his aunt. The movie, he lost his aunt. And you could see the way, you know, that he broke. Even when he threw the suit away, that iconic you know, picture with him throwing the suit in the garbage and him walking away from everything. Civil War, when he told everybody who he was and the backlash that came from that, like he keeps, he's trying to do his best to keep people he loved, you know, safe. But he's one of the ones that always comes back up. He gets up, he fights the good fight, you know, like Captain America in a way. I feel bad for, it's one of those characters I feel really, really bad for, man, because his stories are like, man, ah, man, like, why are you doing this to my man, Peter Parker? Like, give him a break. 
Let them marry MJ. Let them let them have kids. Even then, when we get those books, something always happens. You know, we he got to pass through a multiverse because he can't. He's having a too much of a good life. It's, it's crazy. Like these, it, it, when when it hits home, is we do have friends. Like right now, we have friends that are going through some stuff. And thank goodness they got you know they got us, their family, and and a whole bunch of the comic book community talking to them and letting them know like, bro. So it's all right, you know, just hit me up. I don't care what time it is. Just hit me up. You know what I'm saying? And then let's just talk and let's move forward because I don't need you looking into the darkness because you know that old saying, you look into the dark, darkness is going to look back. And then that's it. You could lose yourself. And we don't want no, none of our friends and family to lose themselves anymore. We want to make sure everybody's happy. It's hard to say, but we got to fight. We got to keep fighting for this. You know, we want to make sure everybody have their life, they fulfill their life, even for not themselves, you know, for someone else that loves them. Then it's most important to check in on people because again, mm -hmm. some people are so good at kind of giving you that face uh, that they're okay. Uh, I've had a, a lot of friends um, who are, unfortunately I've lost to suicide, but you know, for all intents and purposes, they had a great life. They had a great career, but they were dealing with some demons and um, you know, they're not with me, you know, now. Um, and so I think about the lost friendships there, but I also think about the opportunities, right? So sometimes you just have to listen and sometimes you have to do the work to check in on people, just even asking them how they're doing, what's going on, even sending a text at the right time, at the right place, at the right time. That's happened to me multiple times. And even right. for yourself, you know, I've had, I've had times where these two beautiful people have actually sent me text messages and it's come at the right time where I'm having a rough day. And, and not that, you know, I have any suicide ideations or anything or depression, but, you know, just even the maintenance of just, you know, just friendship, being able to feel free, know that you have the support. That right. means the world to people. And you just never know what people are going through. And, uh, you know, a lot of stuff that's been happening, uh, COVID again is another factor that we will probably tackle and then it actually we're tackling in our next, our next episode, but just the trauma behind that and managing that can be almost daunting and you just, you just need the tools. And sometimes you just need to understand that you're not going to get through this overnight. Sometimes it's easy as a cry and refreshing the next morning. And sometimes it's therapy and sometimes it's just going to see someone who's, you know, a professional that can help, you know, for some people it's the church or some type of religious, um, you know, folk who, who can actually help you make sure that you're well known and that people understand and, and don't, you know, don't feel like you have to hide it. Even villains too, you know, you think about the anti-hero as well. So I think about the red hood, you know, um, I think about his character, being right. killed, first of all, and then feeling abandoned by everyone and kind of going the route of, of you know, a villain almost. And uh, and then becoming a superhero or anti-hero. Vengeance. Um, vengeance, yeah. And what motivates you for that, right? And him trying to kill the Joker uh, for revenge, right? Um, for all Batman stopping him. Yeah. yeah, Batman stopping him and, and just, you know, you know, feeling less than and and so there's a lot that goes with this so you know red hoods is one of uh, another one of my uh noteworthy folks who who are dealing with trauma and and deal with it in a different way um mm -hmm. but he eventually finds friendship circles and circles back to the Some bat family ones. any Some other ones th that are noteworthy that we should probably tap into i mean another one that will shoot straight up shoot you we got frank castle the punisher mm. he lost his whole family his wife and daughter in front of him and, you know, he took all he learned throughout his whole life and just he turned into like a supercharged, you know, what I'm saying one man army because and all of it was due to trauma. The, not only the PTSD he went through when he was, you know, on the field, you know, serving, but after to take away his family and everything that happened to him. Man, he's a one man army. He's one of those guys that he's like daredevil. He keeps losing people that's that loves him and want to be a part of his life. And he just keeps losing people. And he ends up, I gotta do this by myself. I gotta walk this lonely road by myself. You know? And that's like, you know, we could talk about the hawk. We could talk about a lot of characters that have trauma. Uh, we could keep it going. And the way they write it, I mean, like Clayman did a great job with the art. Tom King did his thing with, with Heroes in Crisis. He did his thing. Like, so there was one part where 
Booster Gold told the Flash what happened, and the Flash didn't know. So he ended up telling him, oh, everybody died while he was, uh, this and that, at the sanctuary. He zips over there crying, finds out what happens, comes back, punch him in the face because he felt what Booster Gold told him. Like, uh, he did it, you know what I'm saying? Come to find out, like I said, it's a good mystery book. It's definitely a good read. But, man, like, there's so much good writing in here that you're not going to just read it one time. Like, I read this book a couple times. I even watched videos because I wanted to get more of a depth. What what was the meaning for a lot of stuff? Because, you know, you got to do your research after you watch a movie or read a comic. You got to – I want to know what everybody else feel about the comic. I'm just kind of that person that I want to – I want to make sure a lot of people in the same wavelength. And if not, why not? You know, what, what did you take out of this that I didn't see – or why you felt this, you know, a certain way, you know. But it's always good to like open your ears and you know open your eyes because you got to watch what's going on because you never know. Sparked something in my head. I was literally thinking about more superheroes like Green Lantern and the whole parallax piece that, right. you know, I, I, that was a whole nother piece, right? And then you have Sinestro. Yeah, I'm going down the Green Lantern route, but Sinestro ended up killing you know all the Guardians at one point. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it's just really the trauma behind it. And I, I didn't even think about, uh, that interaction between Green Lantern and, and Sinestro where Green Lantern says, why did you do this? I, you know, I thought we were friends and he goes, uh, we never stopped being friends. And, and he called him Hal for the first time and he never, you know, Green Lantern had never heard Sinestro call him by his first name, um, which is kind of crazy. Um, so, you know, and, and he, he basically confesses that he killed the guardianship. And so um, in, in, in that same vein, you know, Sinestro says, we'll always be friends. Um, we'll never stop. We'll always be friends. It was crazy. It's crazy to, to think about like how much these superheroes have to contend with. We talk about the boys, right? There's, that's a whole nother series. Oh, yeah, so we can keep thing. going on and on, but you know, really as a team, we really wanted to highlight this. And then it, it was very, uh, you know, interesting that we had a recent death, our Green Ranger, as Tempo said, who um, just passed away. And uh, we just we just thought it'd be important to fast forward this episode um, and, and just get it out there because we don't know if this will help someone or at least get them involved in yeah. reading a comic book to translate you know their own pain and trauma and how to manage it. We promise to make sure that you have all the resources uh, at, the, at your disposal uh, please share with people. We appreciate all the support, but we mostly appreciate if you can save a life or at least change someone's life. So here's some helplines. If you're in crisis, there's a 988 suicide and crisis lifeline. Uh, it's formerly known as the National Suicide Lifeline. It's 988 for English or Spanish or Lifeline Chat. You can also use the TTY. Users can use their preferred relay service or dial 711, then 988. And then we also have the crisis text line. You can text signs uh, to 741741 for 24 7 anonymous free, free crisis counseling, y'all. So there's no need for you to say you can't afford it. There are people out here to help you. And then the disaster distress helpline. You can call or text 1 800 985 5990. 1 800 985 5990. And then press 2 for Spanish. We also understand that trauma and mental health uh, also has other uh, underlying issues and connections to other areas. And so we also want you to have some context and resources around abuse, assault, and violence. Uh, The National Domestic Violence Hotline is 1-800-799-7233 or text LOVE IS to 22522. Uh, We also know that children are also sometimes victims and so that hotline, the National Child Abuse Hotline, is one 800 4 child We'll put this all in the chat. We'll make sure that this is part of our video uh, montage as well. Uh, they'll feel like you um, have to uh, write it down. We'll put this in our notes as well on our, our um, podcast. The National Sexual Assault Hotline is one 800 656 hope or you can chat online as well. Another, if you're looking for a treatment, so this, this is all over the place with, you know, disorders or even psychiatric or even um, even the American Psychological Association. You can see it all here, um, but to find treatment, go to findtreatment.gov 
It can help you deal with any provider treating substance um, use disorders, addictions, and mental illness at 800-662-HELP. And also the American Psychiatric Association Foundation. It can help you find a psychiatrist at http colon forward slash forward slash finder dot psychiatry psychiatry dot org forward slash American Academy of Child and Adolescent Psychiatry Child and Adolescent Psychiatrist Finder. Also, make sure you go to www.aacap.org. And finally, I'm sure there's other resources as well. We have the American Psychological Association at locator.apa.org. Any last words, y'all, before we uh, finish the show out? Is there anything that we missed? Um, what should people expect from future episodes? Ms. Keys, do you want to talk about what we might be embarking upon in our next Heroes in Crisis episode? So the next episode will be on the issue of my favorite one of my favorite series is eve um if y'all have ever heard of eve or read the series um it's just a little breakdown of outbreak that has happened and you got this little girl and her bear that's basically trying to save the world it's going to be basically touching bases on not really relating to covid but we're gonna try to piece it together in some way that's where we're gonna go next. So we'll definitely side. be jumping into some uncharted territory. Uh, mm -hmm. I know The Walking Dead just finished, but luckily COVID was not on that level. Mm -hmm. But um, but it, it does contend with some of the, the we'll be talking about kind of closely related, you know, some of these uh, like this pandemic, this pandemic and how it affected us, and how we'll um, we'll connect it to this storyline as well. So we just want to introduce you to the storyline and also contextualize it so that way. We can have some deeper conversations offline too. Uh, we're looking forward to seeing our chat blow up with any more information. And even if you yourself are a counselor or you yourself have expertise, please reach out to us. We would love to have you on the show and to talk about more about comic books, but most importantly, how we can help each other and be there. All right. So that's the end of the episode. I am Jen X. I am Miss Ebony Keys. And I'm Tempo's Laboratory. And we are together back to basics of comic book podcast, and we will be coming to you every two weeks. So don't, don't forget, make sure you tag, make sure you put it in your calendar. We'll try and make sure we make it uh, announcements on our IG. Each of us are personalities on our IG. So make sure you follow me uh, at Gen X underscore comics on IG and Miss Miss Keys. What's yours? What's your tagline? It's, it's the same, Miss Ebony Keys, M S E B O N Y K E Y S. Boom. Should be a Mickey Mouse now. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, same. My Tempo's Laboratory. Catch me on IG. Message me if any questions. I'm always here to talk. Yeah, we like to talk to our, our folks, our family members in the comic book community. Yes. So make sure you message us, follow us. You know, we're always trying to build up not only our brand, but also our content. So you'll always find us out there. And we all we always want to know what we can do better. Uh, again, we're trying to be different than anything else out there. And hopefully this episode gave you a little glimpse, just a little glimpse of our next series. And we'll be doing a three-part series again, Heroes in Crisis. And so we hope to see you there. Follow us on YouTube and subscribe. Stop playing. So we'll see you next time. This is Back to Basics, a comic book podcast. Thank you and peace. Oh, oh, oh.